Hi there. Today I'm in my favorite city in the world, Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'm up here on Signal Hill in the heart of downtown Halifax. Um, it is a typically Haligonian day today with the lovely fog for which this city is so well known. Lots of snow on the ground. I just saw Gray off uh, on the plane to Toronto. So he's He's heading home safe and sound. Now today, I, uh, I want to talk about something that a lot of people have, uh, have asked me about. So is uh, why two spirits need their own name. Uh, some people have asked me, uh, why aren't two spirits already covered under the existing categories of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, to a lot of people, it seems like this um, LGBTQIQQAPPMSMRF alphabet soup is getting kind of out of hand. Do we really need all of these <coughs> uh, labels? And you know, why can't native people just be gays and lesbians like everyone else? So today, I want to explain a little bit about uh, what the term actually means and uh, hopefully answer that. So first of all, the reason why we need the word two-spirit is because it really doesn't mean the same thing as uh, lesbian, gay, uh, or bisexual, or transgender. The reason that is that all of the pre-existing English words uh, that describe sexuality and gender originated in the Indo-European binary gender system. Uh, these terms describe relationships and social roles within this specific cultural context, and they assume a particular worldview and a particular understanding of sex and gender that is specific to that context. Traditional First Nations gender systems are not the same as traditional Indo-European gender systems. For a start, they mostly aren't binary. Most First Nations cultures have long-standing traditions of socially recognized third, fourth, or fifth genders, uh, or of fluidity between the genders. So in this context, a two-spirit isn't a man attracted to men or a woman attracted to women. They are a man-woman, something other than man or woman, a two-spirit. The social roles of man and woman are central to gay, lesbian, and straight identities, as well as to terms like homosexual, heterosexual, and bisexual. In a context that recognizes more than two gender roles, these labels just aren't always going to be applicable. Uh, likewise, labels of transgender, transsexual, transvestite, trans means to cross from one state to another. These terms don't accurately describe a person who exists in both states simultaneously or in a third state. So all of these words carry uh, a certain history and a, a cultural context with them, and it, it isn't the same as First Nations history and First Nations culture. A two-spirit isn't the same as a gay person who happens to be native. They're a person whose cultural understanding of sexuality and gender does not map onto the Indo-European gender binary. Um, another difference is that while trans refers to an individual's relationship to their own body, and gay, straight, lesbian, or bi refer to their relationship to their lovers and romantic partners, Two-Spirit describes a relationship to the greater community. Uh, gender and sexuality are a part of that identity, but so are occupation, hobbies, family relations, spirituality. There are spiritual gifts and um, powers associated with two spirits. There's also responsibilities to the community. The exact roles and traditions change from one nation to nation, and two-spirit is also an umbrella term that encompasses a wide variety of both traditional gender roles and uh, contemporary um, expressions of First Nations gender and sexual uh, uh, variety. But um, 
even among people who live, uh, who do not live traditionally, the understanding of themselves in relation to their culture, to their community, and to their spirituality is central to two-spirit identities. Um, the history of sexuality and gender in Indo-European cultures and in First Nations cultures have taken very different trajectories. Gay, lesbian, and bisexual people, uh, for instance, have long fought to be recognized as men and women despite not fulfilling the um, socially prescribed sexual roles for their genders. But uh, within a, a gender system that has more gender poss possibilities and more fluidity between these roles, uh, uh, for, for a two-spirit person, they see their uh, sexuality as a function of gender. So um, gay, lesbian, bisexual people argue that their sexuality is not a function of their gender and that being a man or a woman does not mean being, uh, being attracted to a specific type of person. A two-spirit person is arguing that their sexuality is a function of their gender. Uh, but that their gender is outside of the binary of man or woman. So ultimately, sexuality and gender are socially constructed. Change the social con uh, context and you change that construct. In order to ensure that First Nations understandings of sexuality and gender don't become subsumed within the Indo-European culture and the Indo-European gender binary, it is important for us to have language that reflects First Nations worldviews. That's why we need to keep the two in LGBTT2IQQ, uh, although we might need to rethink this whole acronym thing because it is getting just a little bit unwieldy. So I want to talk more about this topic later, and I'll do so in my next video. Until then, I'll see you later. Take care.